uh, Terry, just to your right here. Um, I guess just first off, you know, with the decision to end up here at Notre Dame, why, why Notre Dame? Uh, why was that the right spot for you? Well, I think when you have an opportunity to come to Notre Dame as a coach or a player, you look at a, a chance to recruit and compete on a national stage. And if you take care of your business on the field, you, you're always going to be in a conversation of the playoffs. And so as a coach, uh, for me, it, it was a career-changing opportunity that I could not turn down. And then when you got the job and you moved over here, how much did you know about the program and the history and everything and how much of that was kind of just learning on the fly? Well, you know, obviously, you know, growing up in New Orleans in the South, um, most of the games that you watch on TV are SEC games. But you always had the national game, which was always Notre Dame. So you watch those games and you kind of know that it's a special place. And then being at North Carolina last year, we played against them. And, you know, you saw a team that um, really uh, played to their strengths and, you know, had a great offensive line. I thought on defense, um, they kind of did what they can do with the players that they had, and that was enough for them to win a lot of ball games. So it was really something that I really wanted to be a part of. Had, had you been in a situation like this where you're joining, you know, a staff with a couple weeks until signing day and kind of scrambling, and and if not, I mean, what was that? Just what was that two week or so span like for you? Yeah, in my coaching career, I, I've done it before. Um, this year was different with the December 20th signing day. So most of the class was already signed at the place I was leaving and also was signed at the place that I was going to. So it would gave me an opportunity to really settle in, uh, go with the defensive coaches, uh, evaluate the safeties, try to close on some guys, but also get a jump on next year's class as far as 2019. And then, as you said, there was already a bunch of defensive backs that had signed when you came in. When you came in and looked at what you had there for you, you know, what was your opinion of that group that was already there? Um, you know, I think um, you know, watching uh, the games from last year, um, you saw a group that um, has a, a great deal of balance as far as age. You have some guys, a good number of seniors, juniors, uh, sophomores, and obviously after the day we have some freshmen in that class. So I think, first of all, we have great balance. Watching the game tape from last year, I thought you know, some guys, uh, a lot of guys play quality snaps. So going into the spring, I think it'll be a great for me to get evaluation of exactly where they are and that way I can feel better about the guys that we just signed and then going into 2019 also know where what our needs are um, right now it'll be hard for me to make uh, that statement on what do we need because I don't really know what we have until we get out on the field You have three safeties coming in, or prospects there right off the bat. Potentially Houston Griffith, Derek Allen, Paul Mall. Have you had a chance to see them, whether on tape or personally, and what are your impressions from them? Yeah, um, you know, starting with Derek, obviously he was a guy that we recruited um, a little bit at North Carolina. He committed to Notre Dame so early, so uh, it, it kind of ended the recruiting, really, because you kind of know he was not going to decommit. But, you know, a guy who's long, can make plays all over the field. As a junior, he played a little bit of corner, so you like his cover skills. But with that kid, you know, the sky's uh, the limit with him, because uh, he can do anything he wants to do. Uh, really a playmaker, plays some wide out, likes to catch the fade, and um, just talking to him. He's a kid who wants to compete, and he wants to win at a high level. Um, with Houston, you know, Houston going to IMG, um, you know, he's a guy who's going to play corner for us and um, see what he can do out on, outside on the perimeter. Um, so also he was a kid that we recruited at some different places. And then Paul, you know, I've just gotten to watch his film here the last few days. But again, you see a guy who's athletic, big, and has a chance to be a physical ball player for us. Coach, your background's a little bit unique in that you've been everywhere from the low man on the totem pole at the high school level to now you're at Notre Dame. I mean, turn around, look at that. that that's mind-blowing for you, I can imagine. What, how, how's it benefit you that you've been at every single level, and how's that help you today? Um, you know, I think the, the big thing for me is that, uh, you know, as a coach, I want to be known as a great teacher. And I think from coaching at the high school level, not only being a coach, but also a teacher in a classroom, it's really helped me develop how I install, how I teach the guys concepts. And I kind of use that experience uh, in my career to my advantage um, by being at every level from GA and at Louisiana, uh, LSU, excuse me, and then going to Louisiana Tech at those places back then, you didn't have all the uh, extra support staff. So 
So you took on a lot of different roles. And so I think uh, it helped me in my career because I had to do things besides coach my position and recruit my area. Um, and so I think that really made me appreciate the opportunities that I got down the road. And um, my minor league baseball career also kind of talked to me about playing at every level. When you were at Louisiana Tech, did you have some grand scheme? Or even when you were in high school, at the high school level, did you have some in, like dream, I want to be here at some point? Or did you just work hard every day and wherever life took you, it took you and here you are? Yeah, I mean, I think, you know, when you start out, you know, it's about be trying to be the very best at the job that you have. And I think um, your body of work over time is going to open some doors up for some other opportunities. And fortunate for me and my family, that's what happened to us in our career. But at, you know, even when I was at Archbishop Shaw High School or Destrahan High School, I was trying to be the very best teacher and coach I could every single day. And luckily for me, through connections and the body of my work, some other opportunities were there for me. Uh, you, you mentioned teaching on and off the field in high school. What, um, what classes did you teach there? Um, I was a business law and economics teacher. What was that experience like? Um, it, was really, um, it was really good because that was the first time in my life I had a, ever experienced the block class setup. So you really had an hour and 30 minutes. So it wasn't just sitting in your class and somebody lectures to you for 50 minutes. It was more um, learning out of your seat, a lot more movement in the classrooms. So the, the guys, it was all boys school. So the guys and me really took advantage of that opportunity to try different things. Some guys learned better doing this. Some guys learned uh, in this situation. So it really gave me an advantage as a teacher to say, hey, not everybody learns the same way. Don't be afraid to try different things. And then you mentioned the minor league baseball career, taking a unique route there. Is there any benefit, or what benefit do you see from just taking a different route to where you are now? Did, did your time in baseball help you in some way um, in your football career now? Well, I think the one thing that minor league baseball, you know, let me know, first of all, it made me grow up a ton. And then the second thing is it's one day at a time because you can be a superstar one day and you can be on the waiver wire the next day and traveling from town to town, staying four days in each town, not making a lot of money. Um, it really made me appreciate all the opportunities that I got later in life. I guess we're dominating the questions here. Um, have you had any time at all to really look at the Notre Dame, the existing Notre Dame players, not the recruits, and like what what's this guy's skill set, or what's that, or is that what the next month is leading into spring football, just figuring out who is who and where they play and all that sort of thing? Um, yeah, you know, I've been really uh, diligent in watching. You know, my goal is to watch the entire season and really uh, evaluate each guy. So I'm probably about halfway through, uh, and you know, just really taking notes on every player um, and really kind of meeting with them as, as much as time as I can and kind of just talking to them about where they think they are, where they want to go, and how can I help them get there. Um, I think over the next few weeks before we start spring practice, I'll really have a feel on, you know, what we have to do. And, you know, I think obviously everybody knows we have to catch at least one interception So <laughs> as, a, as a safety group. So I, I think that'll be a safe play to, to think that we would do catch more than zero. So um, I'm excited about that, and um, hopefully I can get a bonus in my contract if we do.